good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Pavel Zuk, and I'm a country manager for Hatton Energy. Uh, first of all, uh, let me apologize for the title. It's a long one. I wasn't the one who invented it. Uh, secondly, uh, let me just manage expectations for the uh, Q&A session. Um, uh, I work for the upstream industry, but I'm not an engineer. And my G&G &G, uh, staff calls me administrative staff. So, uh, so um, just, just as a sort of introduction. Uh, first of all, let me tell you a bit about Hutton. Hutton is a, unlike uh, Felix, is a, is a privately owned company. And our shareholders uh, are actually uh, um, uh, people who, are, who had experience developing uh, American shell plays and, uh, and also Canadian shell plays. Um, our major shareholder is, is Macquarie Bank and we actually um, operate mostly in Europe, although there is a specific link uh, between what we do in Europe and the experience that we gained globally, specifically in North America. Um, so, I think this is... Uh, we actually are focusing on, on the, uh, European con and conventional resources. We, we were targeting shales. Uh, but, uh, be, but we are targeting multiple pay plays. So we are trying to actually target analog plays to some of the North American areas where, where you actually have uh, multiple drilling targets from one location. Uh, we are focusing on, on onshore assets and, and, uh, and uh, if you look at actually the, uh, the map of, of our presence, and, and uh, where we're looking, we, we're mostly focusing on Poland, and I will talk about Poland separately. We're also looking at acquiring some assets in Belgium and in the UK. And we, we actually are looking also at France and Spain, in a sense, but because of legal constraints, there is not much activity there. In terms of uh, place, we're actually targeting um, not just typical organic shale plays, we're targeting um, formations that, that are uh, different in age, and we are looking at a diverse portfolio of, of, uh, of assets. We're targeting predominantly Carboniferous and Jurassic shales for both uh, um, reservoir source rock, uh, so both as a reservoir, but also as a, as a rock that, that generates the hydrocarbons then later on migrate. Our Polish assets, we are unlike some of our competitors or unlike uh, Three Legs, we have a slightly different approach to Poland. We only have one license in the Baltic Basin, and this is the license where we work together with our partner, San Leon Energy. We have two licenses in the sort of south of Poland that are targeting Carboniferous, and these licenses are also um, operated by San Leon Energy. Um, our core asset that I'm going to talk about today is, is actually Jurassic Play. Um, this is the area in the central Poland. Uh, what you see also on the slides is that, that, uh, that we have multiple targets, and for some of the areas that we operate or that we actually explore in Poland, uh, the primary target is shale, but also we are looking at some of the tight sands as primary targets and conventional structures. Uh, we are a slightly different stage as Three Legs and Conoco because we, uh, we actually uh, got our first licenses in 2010 in Poland, so we, we still believe to be first movers, uh, but, uh, but we, we actually um, started a bit late. That's why we are now at the process where we, um, where we concluded our set of data gathering and... and um, analysis. What, uh, what it shows here on the slide is actually our Jurassic play, which is a pretty unique, and this was also a conscious decision from us, because it does have a lot of legacy data, which is non-typical for Poland. We acquired 1,600 kilometers of seismic, out of which we uh, reprocessed 1,400. 
We looked at some of the uh, 100 wells that were drilled in the area, and we, uh, we actually um, had uh, analyzed around 24 logs. And, uh, and based on that, we identified some of the structures that you can see. And th these structures, we believe, uh, um, have, have a lot of potential, and our sort of uh, intention is to, to prove them further. We believe some of them are drilled already, and, and I think uh, they could possibly create opportunity for us to get some short-term production from conventional or semi-conventional sources to finance shale development program. We also got into cooperation with, uh, with, uh, with Polish research and institutes. Uh, we, we put together a, a research and development program that runs in parallel with, with our exploration and appraisal program. And, and we, uh, we got uh, a government grant for a program that was worth $3 million. And now that was started about a couple of months ago, working together with um, Polish Academy of Science to, first of all, um, properly map the structures that we identified in the preliminary stage. And secondly, also to try to uh, develop new seismic techniques to be able to better document um, Jurassic shale basin. Uh, on the next slide, you see what we estimate as the potential for, for the Jurassic play. And, and these are, of course, preliminary numbers that still need to be proven. But it actually looks like that the, the three seemingly most promising structures uh, um, provide significant or show significant potential in terms of gas production and oil production. What also we, we actually, well, if you, if you look further down, you'll see our, our shell play reserve estimation that is very much back of the envelope. But it told, also tells you that in terms of both uh, the size of the play and, uh, and the depth at which the play is located, which is relatively economical to drill, this is something clearly worth looking at. And of course, it will require a lot of further work and analysis. Finally, about our work program, uh, we, um, we completed the first stage, as I mentioned, which is uh, um, legacy data uh, acquisition and processing. We actually also completed, um, at the end of, uh, at the middle of this month, uh, we completed our seismic acquisition program of 250 kilometers that, um, that was part of the blue gas program. And now we're looking to embark on a geoscience program, plus we're looking to actually, uh, we're working with the ministry, and I, I'm, I was really glad to hear from the minister Wojniak that now red tape is gonna be removed and we're gonna have faster processing of license change requests, but we're working on actually having uh, a flexible appraisal work program approved that will have um, three to even 18 wells in it over the entire area of free licenses. Um, this program uh, uh, we value at around $30 million. We believe pilot production from uh, the sort of very promising conventional and semi-conventional um, uh, structures will require additional 30, and, and a very, very sort of uh, simple calculation of capital needs for the shared development is around $600 million over the f 10 years. The good news also for our Jurassic play, and this is the, uh, is that it's located very much within existing gas infrastructure. Uh, so uh, the, the pipeline system in, in the central Poland is fairly, uh, fairly dense, and, and I think the only problem will be getting, of course, the permit to connect and getting approval from the uh, gas system operator who has a monopoly in Poland, unfortunately. Um, in terms of oil, close refinery is just within uh, driving radius, and, and, and I think uh, this will be also the benefit 
if commercial production can be proven and then achieved. Finally, a bit uh, reflecting upon today's uh, uh, conference and also upon what's happened in Poland uh, over the last sort of three or four years in the uh, exploration and appraisal arena, uh, I, I put together a, a sort of list of things we would ideally want to happen uh, uh, for, a, for a, a list of enablers uh, to actually uh, help commercialize our assets in Poland, but I think that would help the industry. And, and, and no surprise, permitting time and, and sort of predictable legal framework is there. Um, uh, we, of course, have community support and community engagement. That is very important, especially uh, when you go into the field. And we've had some experience with our seismic program, but of course, the fun starts when you start drilling and your tracks enter into, into a, what, was to, what, what, what seemed to be a very quiet area. Uh, I think we also need new technology that is slowly coming to Poland, and of course we need experience of existing operators. But I think above all we need investment and we need capital. And Kamlesh mentioned it is going to be hard now to raise money for exploration. But I think it's going to be even harder if we don't have investor-friendly environment in, in this country. And we very much hope that this will continue to be changing. There are some good signs, uh, and we hope that the new minister will actually um, um, do what he says. Thank you very much. Let me, let me just start with uh, one um, a comparison between the international oil corporation and the mid-sized companies. And some of the international oil corporations, they relinquish their blocks or they are about to relinquish them. Do you think that this opens more space for, uh, for, for mid-sized companies? Uh, is there a real distinction that the big companies, they come for, uh, for easier targets and they, you know, mid-sized companies, they are more time, uh, it, it would take them more time and more efforts to, to develop and the mid-sized companies would, would more focus on the, uh, on the let's, let's say, uh, Polish shale in this case. Well, I, I can tell you from experience because I worked for a big company before, now I work for a not even medium size but more, more of a smaller one, but I think um, what, what we also saw in the States is that, you know, smaller independent players come in and they are not risk averse, whereas uh, big players, they, they come in and they want to see the results fast. And of course, they come with big overheads and the longer they stay without the results, the more pressure comes from the top. And I think what we ideally uh, would like to see, and I believe we're going to see that, we're going to have these players coming back and paying a premium to get into the assets we develop. Okay, thank you. Uh, I open floor for questions uh, from the audience, uh, so please again raise your hand. Uh, the mic will be with you shortly. Please, uh, don't be afraid of Pavel. <laughs> Here is the question. Ministry of National Development Hungary. My question to you, I saw your uh, development program. First phase is $30 million, second is 600. So uh, in the $30 million, you mean you can drill that amount of wells, what you highlighted, which will finance the later on shale program? Did I understand it well or not? Well, maybe I was not, I, I went through the presentation quickly. You know, I think first of all, we need to complete our appraisal program and we, we believe it's going to cost us around $30 million. Secondly, uh, we'll have a, a bit of a pilot production phase that, well, it's, it, again, very back of the envelope calculation will require additional 30 to 50. And then for the production, I think we'll require another 150 plus. Plus the shell development is a big, big uh, amount of money, and, and, and I, think, you know, I think it's just to give you the, 
more or less the high level idea. Um, um, but you know, these are not big numbers for big operators. For independence, it, it's, it's a challenge to get the money. But then if you prove the play, you'll get the money. And what, what's your plan? How will you, will you try to involve uh, investment funds or try to involve some kind of banks or private investors? So which is, what do you think, which window is more open uh, for this? I think we, um, we, 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 first of all, we want to complete our, um, our sort of seismic acquisition program. We want to do further geoscience. And then upon the results, we'll decide what is the best way to, uh, uh, to, f to source the money, whether this is through farm out or whether this is through actually raising money uh, through the market or financial investors. But at this point in time, it's very hard to say. Because in Hungary, we uh, experience from the operators that they can't get uh, any, any kind of investment under P90 estimations. And that's why a couple of companies went over so somehow it looked like that P90 estimations, what they gave, it's much more possibly P50 or under that, which for you will never get any kind of real funds, for, especially from banks. Well, I mean, certainly we will not get any support from Nokia, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but um, I believe, I mean, I think we are prepared to drill the first wells ourselves. Yeah? So we, we believe that, uh, that by drilling wells and having more data, will get the right information to actually be credible in the market. Some further questions? Well, maybe I will, I will ask one about the uh, regulatory framework and its importance uh, for uh, collecting money. How would you say the uh, dialogue uh, where the regulations on the table, there is this uh, only one item related to Noki, uh, unresolved. Uh, would you expect for some step back in this respect and, and, and open up the dialogue again? Uh, we would love to have a, another round of dialogue as an industry, uh, but we're also conscious of how politics work. And, and there may be already uh, a concept that is set in, in the government that, that needs to be implemented. And I think for us, the important bit would be to, uh, that this concept creates as little harm as possible, at the same time that we know what the concept is like and how it's gonna work. So we know whether, what are the requirements of, or what are the obligations and what are the rights of, of Nokia, I think for us, the big sort of question mark is whether, uh, you know, whether Nokia will be the one questioning constantly the way operators work or whether they will be a silent partner. And like we had in a Dutch presentation, uh, they will take another 20 or 30 years to learn exploration before they actually voice uh, uh, their opinion. And I think the big risk, we're in Poland, we're in Central Europe, and we know that, that that our mentality is about being right most of the time. So I think um, uh, that this is the big challenge for the government to have an institution that is, that is actually working with operators rather than just controlling them because the way it looks, Nokia is, is more like a, a regulator, controller. There is a lot of penalty in the language that uh, so far Ministry of Environment uh, was, was kind of phrasing, and, uh, and we understand the challenges of um, implementing a new law, but I think we would like to be heard as the industry.